All right, Hunter, when I went to school here in Vegas. Another when I went to school in Vegas story. It was buffets on the strip or it was pizza. That was our food scene. OK, well, when I went to school in Vegas, we had everything we wanted. Well, that's why I'm bringing you this place. I'm hearing from everybody that this place is doing authentic Caribbean. This is House of Dutch Pot. Chicken and roti, gave us running three. This is my go-to place. Start off with the Ikean sawfish right here. How close is this to authentic? My parents had Jamaican restaurants growing up. This is a real deal. Right down to the name Dutch Pot. A big pot that we cook with back home. And a consistent reminder of chef and owner O'Neill Smith's Jamaican roots. This is part of my joy, J-O-I. It's my journey as an immigrant. Where did you learn to cook? Man, self-taught. But I did every fast food purposely. I knew I would know the back end of the business. You knew where to find your information, which is amazing. You're a perfect storm. You're taking it from the corporate world, but staying true to your roots. My food represents me. I got it. Here is your jerk chicken. Today, I had the jerk chicken. You can taste the sweet, and then boom, the kick just comes. This is actually my house blend that make the food taste phenomenal. Ported seasoning from Jamaica, chicken flavor base. Our spice right here, my guy. Blackened seasoning, chicken base. And we make this at least 100 pounds every week. And if people want to buy this? We got the jars in the restaurant. So jerk seasoning. Yes, sir. Garlic and herb blend. And we got the regular blend. This is this one? Yes, sir. Today, right here, my guy, we got quarter legs. So we got the onions, okay. Julian's onions, green onions, ported seasoning from Jamaica. Chicken and paprika. Yes, got sir. It. You got fresh thyme. Thyme is key. Fresh garlic. All spice. Ginger, habanero, also jalapenos. Add water. The trick now, you want to put the pot of season before you put the fresh herb. This is a regular blend. We're doing this one first. This is just a jerk one right here. We got the paste. You got to fight with it. So you want the seasoning to get all up in it. You with me right now, my guy? Oh, yeah, man. OK. How long is this going to marinate? Two hours. This goes on the grill. Four to five minutes on each side. You want a medium high flame. We're going to make the tambourine jerk sauce. So with the tambourine, what I'm doing, my guy, we let it marinate overnight. It essentially makes a tamarind water. Yes. Jerk paste, our purpose seasoning, a little bit of soy sauce, brown, brown sugar. sugar. All right, then we got the ketchup. And you're going to let it come to a boil. Cornstarch slurry to tighten it up. What's up next? Rice and peas. But we do authentic. Voila. Fresh coconut. Readily available on the oven. And everybody, y'all, we're using the same coconut water. So we're going to blend it all up. Get all the coconut flavor. Straining it. Red peas. Now, would you call this a kidney bean? Kidney bean. So you, you soak this with garlic and with water overnight, and it finished cooking like 25, 30 minutes. Whoa, 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 whoa. The yeah. garlic opens it up. Tremendously. 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 We got a piece over here cooking. In a little bit of water. Next. Green onion. Okay. Yellow onion. Fresh thyme. We got bell peppers. Red, green, and yellow. Rasta color. Yum. Ah. Parsley. The water right here. Blend it fully. So we'll pour that all in. This is the liquid we're going to cook the rice in. Put coconut milk. Habanero. This is just going to steep in it. When you're about to oh. stir it up. Yeah, take you pull it, out. it out. Garlic powder, onion powder. We're going to add the rice. Are we cooking this with a lid, or are we just cooking this nah, over? Cook. That's where the beauty comes. Oh, my what God. Come on. What oh, happened? You got to cover it. OK. <laughs> Four to five minutes. Once the water dries out, you turn it down low heat and just right. let it steam. And do you make the crunchy rice? Shelly. Make sure the rice and peas, Shelly man. Shelly man. That's it. That's how you like your rice. Shelly. Shelly. And then the chicken, it smells dynamite. Gonna cut it? OK. Whoa. And we're going to top it off with a tamarind jerk sauce. Look at that. Tears right off the bone. Straight off the bone. How about a piece of sweet plantain? Definite texture in the peas. Great texture to the rice. It's Shelly. Thank you. <laughs> My god. <laughs> the tamarind jerk sauce. But it is that sweet and that tangy. The chicken's another level. That is some of the greatest chicken. I can't get it in my mouth fast enough. Jerk chicken. Looking good. It's just so flavorful, so tender. The tamarind is amazing. I love the sweetness and the sourness. I think everybody knows by now I went to college here in Las Vegas, and I'm about a half mile off the strip. Now, I drove by this place a million times. Never stopped in here. It's called the Eureka Casino, and boy, did I miss out. This is the home of Fat Joy Asian American Fair. I have your sesame noodles here for you. Looks like a diner, but tastes like it's gourmet. What fat joy burger? If I was ever in the hospital, I want someone to sneak this into me. Chicken teriyaki rice. And Sheridan's a, an amazing chef. That'd be Sheridan Sue, who worked in kitchens from New York to Los Angeles before rolling the dice in Vegas in 2011. They started off as a food truck. And then he had a little kiosk that was in the middle of a beauty salon. And now he's got a full kitchen and a full restaurant. One pork belly bow. I typically get two orders of the pork belly bow. The Chinese steamed bun with marinated pork bellies. Total goodness. So this is how loud it's going to be the whole time? We're in a wind tunnel. 
What are we making? We're making pork belly bao. All right, man, get into it. We're going to start with a marinade, two cups of soy sauce. There we go. Four cups of water, and brown sugar, garlic powder, and green onion. There we go. So let that simmer down? Yes. I said let it simmer down. We're going to pour it right on top of the pork. You have to let it cool down, otherwise you're going to poach it. Yes. And then I'll cover it. Now this will marinate for 24 hours, then go in the oven. For three hours, okay. uh, 300 degrees. And then what's going on here with the pork? The pork, we'll put a pan over it just to compress it. So we'll put it in the fridge overnight. And then from here, we'll take the pans out. So we'll take this baby out, right onto the cutting board. Oh, I'll just trim off the edges. Got it. Cut them into nice blocks. So we'll sear that off in a pan? Yes. Brown it on both sides. All right, now what are we doing? Now we're going to chop the uh, preserved mustard greens. OK. We're going to go ahead and saute them. Got it. So first the oil, garlic, onion, and then goes the mustard green. And a little sweet soy sauce. And how long are you going to let that saute down? About three minutes. OK. We have our steamed buns. We're going to open the bell. First it goes uh, hoisin sauce. That's how I roll. With the pork belly right on top. Top of that gets preserved mustard greens. And then the crushed peanuts. Okay. And then finally cilantro right on top of that. And this is one of the number one sellers. Yes. That's it. The pork belly bow. And that's all she wrote. Okay. Let's get after this. Great steam bun, nice tender, nice and light. The pork is tender. It's sweet. I like the counterbalance with the mustard green. Really good, man. Awesome. A real deal. Nice. All right, pork belly bow. Luscious and delicious and outstanding. And it's like the ultimate slider, right? It's like super sized bacon. It's pretty cool. What, BLT? Sheridan's made a reputation of taking American food and giving a little Asian twist to it. I'm not just raving on because it's bloody television, mate, you know? Everything on the menu, it's fantastic. You come in here, you have a eclectic mix. Definitely not what I'd expect. Awesome. Nice job. Glad you like it. Triple D hanging outside of Reno, Nevada at Butcher's Kitchen Charbecue. And the wild man here is Big Ed, who owns the joint with Ed Jr. You're sort of like a Rembrandt in the kitchen. Plus, he's pulled his other boys into the fire. Just the way I taught you for the last 25 years. The food is phenomenal. You smell it before you even walk in the front door. One filet mignon sandwich. The filet is as tender as you can get. There's a good char on the meat. Plan for a nap afterwards. Filet mignon is, of all the cuts of meat, my least favorite. There's not a lot of flavor. I don't like it grilled. So when I heard about this on the menu, I had to see it. Let's get in the marinade. OK, some red wine vinegar. We've got some lemon juice. That is a lot of acid. Fresh garlic, crushed red pepper. He's making Italian dressing. Right. Black pepper, basil, oregano, sugar. We've got some parsley, a mustard powder. OK. A little bit of thyme, and we got our salt. Give this a good blend. And we're going to add a little bit of water so it all comes together well. Add in our olive oil. We want to give it some mouthfeel. You should really think about going on the Food Network or something. You know, I got some ideas. We wouldn't even have time to break for a commercial. Now, you're bringing in Pismo Tender. This is a tool that I created. It's called the Impressor. It's 60 razor blades, spring loaded. I tried to give you one at the Trucky Diner. Which is a Triple D joint we visited 10 years ago, where Big Ed happened to be eating. I couldn't take it. I can't fly with that. It's going to cut through the connective tissue, the right. things that make me tough. But what also is great for fast marinating and brining. Why don't we turn this into an infomercial? A picture speaks a thousand words. This comes with two pounding plates. Just broadening it out a little bit. I like it. what you're talking about, boss. Okay. So now, how long is the marinade going to sit on here? Two to four hours. That thing's flavored to the core. Then we're going to cook it to a medium rare, cover with provolone, put it on a toasted bun with peppers and onions and pepperoncinis. It's pretty simple, but knowing this guy, it's not going to be simple on the flavor. Yep, I was able to make it happen, folks. I kept him from talking for one whole minute. <laughs> one whole, I beat the family world record. You win the prize. Ah. All right, back to my old statement. I'm not a fan of the filet. But if you're going to give it that kiss of the vinegar and the garlic, 
And then you hit it with the acid and the sweetness of the caramelized onions and peppers, but then you get some of the cherry peppers in there and a little salty provolone. Yeah. This is what you want steak sandwich. The real deal. Thank you. What do you think of the filet mignon sandwich? Um, it's fantastic. You get the smoke, you get the herbs. I'm devouring it. It's delicious. Bratwurst sandwich. The family really loves what they do, and it comes out in the food. Super impressed. Thank you. Thank Super you. impressed. Speaking of impressors. <laughs> Available. <laughs> So I'm here in Sparks, Nevada, just about a mile or two outside of Reno. I bet you they're doing some real deal barbecue. This is Carolina Kitchen and Barbecue Company. We did the chicken wing competition. We did first place for about five years. Five wing nachos up. The smoked wing nachos are awesome. Everything that you usually see on nachos now suddenly is on chicken. They're just devastating. We have our chicken wings. We're going to make our smoked wing nachos. We're going to rub them down with some oil. Oil only. That's it. Well, no salt, no pepper now. Not yet, because we're going to deep fry them. We don't want that char flavor on the rub. OK. That's a big wing. There's a couple wingless pterodactyls out there. Smoke them for about 45 minutes. 275. OK, come out of the smoker, into the fryer. All right, what are we into? Dry rub, which is half Cajun seasoning, half rib rub. This is our Cajun seasoning, paprika, salt, granulated garlic, black pepper, white pepper, onion powder, ground thyme, dry mustard, and chili powder. Got it. And we're going to go rib rub, salt, White pepper, paprika, black pepper, chili powder. This is going to get interesting in a second. Sugar? White sugar, brown sugar clumps, granulated garlic. You don't find the burn on the white sugar? No, I like it. You've won competitions with this rub. I have. I won't tell anybody. Shh. Do a little half and half here. And this is what we're going to sprinkle on the wings. Hit it with some moonshine barbecue sauce, cheese, bacon. Pop it in the oven for a minute. OK. But where are the tortillas? There are no tortillas. The wing is the nacho. It has all the toppings on it. All right. This I got to see. Diced tomato. How are you going to get the tomato to stay on the chicken one? Green onion, spicy ranch, sour cream. <laughs> it's a really good wing. I love the smoke, a little fry to it. The Nucci tortilla chip, you get the crunch of the outside of the wing. The cheese melts on really nice. Then you have the bacon sticking to it, so you get all best of both worlds all over it. You hit that moonshine sauce on there, which is dynamite. You get yourself some of the cool sour cream. That's one of the most unique dishes I've seen on Triple D, and you actually pull it off. Well done. Thank you. There's so much going on here, but it all works really, really well. Sour cream on a wing is delicious. It's something I haven't had. They're amazing. It's crazy, isn't yes. it? Yes. I'm just like you guys. I mean, not just for Triple D, but for me and for my family. I'm always looking for great restaurants. I'm always on the hunt. So a few years ago, I was in Truckee, California. Everybody tells me about this place. You got to get the sandwich here. So I did, and it was dynamite. Well, now I'm in Reno, Nevada, and I find out these dudes have got a second location. I got to check it out. This is Full Belly Deli. Sicilian on Parmesan. Absolutely lives up to its name. Definitely Full Belly. These guys are all about creating a great sandwich. They're passionate about it. You got a biscuits and gravy burrito. Their biscuits and gravy breakfast burrito is like two breakfasts in one. They have the biscuit and the home fried potato in there. If you're looking for all your breakfasts, just come get this burrito. Let's see it. What's the game plan? We're making a chorizo sausage gravy for our burrito. Olive oil. And you're making the chorizo? It's made from a local company here in town. Got it. Breakfast sausage, all pork. Once the meat's cooked down, add organic AP flour, paprika, Granulated garlic, onion powder. Cook that flour out. Half and half in whole milk. Let this come to a simmer and salt and pepper, and it'll be ready to serve. This next step of making biscuits for one dish, it's impressive. Organic AP flour here, a sugar, baking soda, baking powder. Just give this a quick pulse here. And we have our extra cold butter. Give it a good pulse to get it about pea size. The idea is breaking that butter up so it just sits there suspended between the flour. So when it cooks, you really develop all of those layers. Correct. It means everything in the world of making a good biscuit. Incorporate the buttermilk slowly, and it's going to kind of look a little dry. But he's got more butter than we typically see, so this is going to make a nice, light, flaky biscuit. If we can get it to stay together, because right now it just looks like we're trying to make a sandcastle out of dry sand. <laughs> we're going for a square here. It could be a triangle for all I care. Roll this out. We're going to cut this. You brush it with a little bit of buttermilk. We're going to finish with salt and pepper. OK. You go in the oven how long? 25 minutes at 350. So That do not is beautiful. Wow. Drop tortilla on the uh, flat top to warm it up. Hash brown coming out of the fryer there. Gonna take our biscuit, ah. slice this up. Oh, seems sacrilegious. We're gonna add a little cheddar cheese to this guy. Crispy hash brown, biscuit there. And then we've got our gravy. Oh, so it's for the whole family, I see. You roll it up. All right, can you help me lift it up? 
That's ridiculous. <laughs> We're gonna take that over to the panini press, and then we are ready to go. Hi, carb. Meet carb. <laughs> well, I'm gonna show you first thing. As scared of it as I was, for some reason, the way you've made it, the way you've seasoned it, it really is not overly heavy. It's delicious. The biscuit is light and flaky in there. The crunch of the hash brown inside is really nice. But the kicker for me is the gravy, bro. But I just have a bowl of gravy. This is a ski bum delight, 101. Well done, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Well Appreciate done. It. We got a biscuits and gravy burrito. It blows my expectations out of the water. The chorizo in the gravy has so much flavor. The biscuit is soft and delicious. 